Welcome back to Inside the Heat. In 1997, after almost a decade in the Miami arena, Pat Riley and Heat owner Mickey Arison shared a vision and started campaigning for a new home, the American Airlines Arena. Despite meeting initial opposition, the Heat remained vigilant, and by January 28, 1998, they were breaking ground on a new world-class venue. Two years later, the team ushered in the new millennium with a new arena, a new-look team, and a new era of Heat basketball. I've always said that the only thing you can count on in this league is change. Change can start right here. Crews are now working around the clock to make sure the American Airlines Arena is ready for opening night. Construction finished in time for the AAA's inaugural event, Gloria Stefan's New Year's Eve concert. Two nights later, the Heat christened their new home with a victory. There comes a time when you have to plant your feet and make a point about who you are. Marley for three. Under. In 2000, the Heat made the playoffs for the fifth year in a row, but after again falling to the Knicks, Pat Riley was ready for more change. He founded and forward Brian Grant, plus three-time All-Star guard and Pompano Beach native Eddie Jones. This is where I wanted to be, without a doubt. When we got Brian and Eddie, we thought we had a championship team. We did not know what was going to happen to Zoe. Good evening. The announcement leaving South Florida and Heat fans everywhere stunned. Alonzo Mourning will not be playing professional basketball this season. Mourning was diagnosed with a rare kidney disease, leaving the Heat without its leader. Coach came to Eddie and I and just told us we had to try to pick up the slack, and you can't really pick up the slack for Zoe. But the team did not fold. They won 52 games in 2001. Sparked by Zoe's return, the Heat also made it to the playoffs before losing to Charlotte in the first round. Grant and Jones were a key part of keeping the team together. Eddie was a guy that we really depended a lot on. He was like a go-to guy for us. Jones fires the triple. Oh, he did it! In his six seasons in Miami, Jones knocked down 712 three-pointers to place him second on the Heat's all-time list. Grant, meanwhile, averaged 11 points and eight and a half rebounds in his four seasons. B. Grant, what, what can I say about him, man? He's a warrior. He left it all out there on the court. Grant with another offensive rebound. And slam! And one foul! Whether we won or lost, I know he gave his best effort. The departure of a few key pieces changed the Heat. 2002 and 2003 marked the first losing seasons under Riley. But more change was on the way. With the fifth pick, the Miami Heat select Dwayne Wade. You add Karan in there, you bring Lamar Odom in, and you Donis, and we knew we had something. I always look back at the 2004 Heat as the team that got Miami to fall back in love with Miami Heat basketball. Revitalized by young blood, Grant and Jones were part of a new Heat team. One that was flashy, fast, and fun. Oh, Jones with a steal. Oh, what a monster pick by Grant. They were just as electric on the court. New head coach Stan Van Gundy had the team poised for the playoffs, where his secret weapon introduced himself to the world. Wade puts it up. It's yes. good. Yeah, baby. Stan Van Gundy went to the rookie, and he delivered. And turn inside the way down the middle. The Heat ultimately fell to the Pacers in the second round, but thanks largely in part to its two veterans, Miami transitioned from back-to-back -back losing seasons to a team with a promising future. Brian and Eddie bridged that gap. I love them dearly, and I miss them. And, but they'll always be part of the, the history of the Miami Heat. I'm just proud to have been a part of the Heat culture period. I'm not even in Miami, but I'm still part of the family. It's incredible. I didn't grow up with a professional team here. So to be part of it and continue to be part of it, I mean, means the world to me. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. In the 2003-2004 season, the Heat was a young team that provided exciting basketball led by rookies Dwayne Wade and Udonis Haslam, plus veterans Brian Grant and Eddie Jones. Heading into the next season, the team would get a makeover in order to help them reach new heights. In the summer of 2004, the Heat traded away Brian Grant, Lamar Odom, and Karan Butler to Los Angeles for three-time world champion Shaquille O'Neal. Needless to say, big things were coming to South Florida. 
In the summer of 2004, the Heat acquired three-time NBA champion Shaquille O'Neal, who came to Miami with a bold promise. Hello, Miami. I want y'all to remember this feeling right here. I'm going to bring a championship to Miami, I promise. Shaq and Wade went right to work fulfilling that promise. And in March of 2005, they would get help in the middle with the return of a familiar face. Blocked by Joe! How about that for a welcome back home? The Heat would have a successful regular season and a deep playoff run. Off the glass and in! Oh my goodness, how did he do that? But injuries would derail their championship hopes as they fell to the defending champion Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals. A shocker here in Miami. Determined to get back to the top, the Heat retooled in the summer of 2005. That season would see Pat Riley's return to the bench and revenge against the Pistons gave Miami a franchise first. A night here in South Florida we will never forget. We're going to the NBA Finals. In their first Finals appearance, the Heat faced the Dallas Mavericks. After losing the first two games in Dallas, the eventual Finals MVP took a stand. Nah, I ain't going out like this. Fueled by Wade's effort, Miami won the next four games in a row, giving the team their first NBA championship in franchise history. Congratulations, Miami Heat. 2006 NBA champion. The part that makes winning a championship special is not just the winning, it's the losing. Being able to win and have Alonzo be part of that, you know, which is incredibly special. When Dwayne threw the ball up in the air, it's just, it's indescribable the euphoria that you feel. The championship euphoria would not last long, as the Heat went through a rough stretch and had their worst losing season since the inception of the franchise. That brought upon a second overall draft pick in Michael Beasley and a new head coach in Eric Spolster. I look forward to the future and uh, really trying to bring back some of the success that we're accustomed to. Miami stayed competitive, making the playoffs for the next two seasons, but remained focused on a bigger goal just beyond the horizon. The Heat is looking to strike gold in free agency. We just sort of looked at 2010 and said, wow, what a free agent class this is going to be. We were very disciplined in staying the course and becoming a major player in 2010, which is what we did. The Heat were not only major players, they got major players. Dwayne Wade is now staying in Miami and bringing another star player, big man Chris Bosh. LeBron James announces he's joining the Miami Heat. The enormity of it just hits, and you're like, wow, it really turned the NBA upside down. When the three of them signed and came to Miami, I knew that we had a very good foundation and, and possibly a great future. James with the stars aligning for the Heat, Miami became the center of the NBA universe. After a season of unprecedented criticism and adversity, the Heat reached the NBA Finals, where they would eventually fall short to the Dallas Mavericks. Just to not accomplish a goal is tough, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, everybody who's ever won something has went through that, so the pain is encouraging. Just a year later, that pain brought the team back to a familiar situation. They weren't going to let this one slip away. James on the break and the finish. Led by a masterful performance by Finals MVP LeBron James, the Heat defeated the Oklahoma City Thunder in five games and won their second NBA championship on their home floor. It's over! And Miami wins the NBA title! We are all part of the legacy of what the Miami Heat is. You know, it begins and ends with the players. They are the foundations of our history. It's been 25 years of the Heat. Wins, losses, championships, and players. And a legacy that is still being etched in history by the Heat family today. In 25 years, the Miami Heat has grown. And though the faces and names may change, one thing that has remained the same is the family-oriented environment that the organization provides. Every player that has ever worn a Heat jersey is a part of the storied history, and they will forever be a part of the Heat family. It all started 25 years ago with a dream that caught fire and spawned a new generation of sports fans in South Florida, basketball fans. Going from an expansion team to a multiple championship team in 25 years is remarkable. And one thing is for sure, the Heat is here to stay. And we look forward to the next 25 years and beyond. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson.